Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Hope you're having a great day today. Today I am here to talk, nay, to warn you guys of a little game called Risk of Rain 2. And it's hard to describe why Risk of Rain 2 is as addictive as it is. Because the core of the game is repetitive and simple. It's just endlessly shooting up a freight train of monsters in a procedurally generated world that isn't even that detailed. Every once in a while you come across a chest that spits out an item to increase your stats or give you an extra ability. And this keeps going until your eventual demise. So you can do it all over again. Indeed, with this pessimistic interpretation, one might think that Risk of Rain doesn't have that much to offer. But then, why is it that yours truly has already logged in more than 10 hours in the game and is not intending to stop anytime soon? Let's take a look at Risk of Rain 2. To understand the success of Risk of Rain 2, we need to travel back to 2013, where developer Hapu created a success formula for their roguelike Risk of Rain 1. Instead of focusing on the complexity of the environment, Hapu decided to focus more on the increasing difficulty, characters, and the plethora of items one can acquire during their playthrough. This core concept has remained the same for their sequel, it's just in a different graphical code. And while the textures and models have been kept simple, the atmosphere of the different environments you traverse ensure a succeeded setting where you are not distracted during fast-paced action. Even if at first we were not fans of the graphical representation, opening the game world to a 3D environment does give you more of a feeling that you are present in the world. It takes a few rounds for the difficulty to catch up, but once it's there, it throws you into these hectic situations where you'll need to learn how to use your chosen character, or survivor as they are called, quickly in order to survive. Speaking of these survivors, each survivor has four active skills, one normal attacking skill, two heavy skills, and a utility skill that helps you dodge incoming fire. It sounds simple, but they actually offer a lot of variation between each survivor. This means that no two survivors play the same, where the commando is running around with an SMG able to shoot phase rounds that go through terrain or shoot a salvo that temporarily stuns enemies, the huntress is more about speed and agility. The engineer, probably the hardest survivor to learn, has a shady grenade launcher that makes it hard to aim with, but can plop down turrets to mow down the enemies. Oh, and the turrets get the same items you do, which can lead to turrets becoming virtually invincible. What I mean by this is that every survivor plays completely different from each other and it's not unlogical that favoritism creeps up. And the best thing about unlocking these characters, these survivors, is that the game just doesn't throw them to you when you reach a certain level. The more exotic survivors, like this mage, are locked behind secret areas or bosses which require you to put in a little bit more effort but the reward is so satisfying. I think I talked enough about the characters. Let's move on to the items. And oh boy, <laughs> there are a lot of items. There's over a hundred different items you can come across during your adventures, ranging from white, green, and red to show their rarity. And next to that, you also have yellow items, which are dropped from bosses, blue items that you can only buy with lunar coins, and orange items that give you an extra ability. And because of the items, every stat your character has can be increased with just one little piece of loot. Increasing your sprint speed, rate of fire, cooldowns, giving you an extra jump, setting your enemies ablaze, exploding your enemies when they die, give you shields, and even give you a passive heal when you're standing still. And picking up more of the same items increases their potency, so it's a good investment to pick up every item you come across. There are, of course, certain items that synergize better with certain characters, like a 6x double jumping huntress that can rain a hail of arrows from above, or a multi whose assault rifle is rattling at 10 times the rate of fire. And the best part is you don't even need to slot them anywhere, just have them in your inventory and you're good to go. The game does lose a bit of depth this way, but it keeps the game going and makes it more interesting. I mean, the game does rank up in difficulty the longer you play. Might as well make your character overpowered, right? Right. And it's exactly this that makes Risk of Rain 2 so 
endlessly addictive and creates this one more try mentality because who knows what item combination you'll end up with next. And the game does not become easy even though you have godlike items at the end. Remember the difficulty rating I talked about earlier? Yeah, that thing just keeps on increasing difficulty which directly influences the levels and types of enemies you come across. This means that you're constantly battling yourself. Do you keep exploring or move on to the next area? Exploring might give you better items. Might, but that darn difficulty rating will catch up to you eventually and make the next area a lot harder to deal with. Next to items you also come across artifacts which modify your next run. These artifacts can be used to make your next run more difficult or yet more forgiving. Oh, and have I talked about the co-op yet? This game strikes a nice balance between playing solo and playing co-op. While co-op is the way to go, playing solo is a bit more relaxing. A little nice snack during a pause or maybe a way to vent while listening to a podcast. But I digress. Let's look at the bad things, or a thing, rather. There's only one bad thing to talk about, really, and it's not even that big of a deal. Even though Risk of Rain 2 is a highly addictive roguelike, the game isn't really balanced in terms of items. Some items are just blatantly better than others. Some diehard fans of the first hour have already critiqued that some of the builds are just way too powerful and that recycling items just isn't worth it. But don't let this minor gripe stop you from playing this masterpiece. If you are a fan of roguelikes or even have a mild interest in looter shooters, there is no reason for you not to try Risk of Rain. In conclusion, this game gets a 9 out of 10 from me. Although not perfect, Risk of Rain puts down a solid roguelike experience that guarantees many hours of endless fun. It's a flashy action game with a lot of items to collect and a lot of survivors to unlock. The graphics, although stylized, look a bit too spartan for me at times, and the item balancing can use some tweaks. And as we're wrapping up, I would love to point you all in the direction of our community Discord server. We're growing by the day and have a lot of awesome people over there. Link is in the description below. There you will also find a link to our Twitch page where we stream 5 days a week and end our streams with raids on smaller streamers. Hope to see you all there. And lastly, you'll find a link to our Twitter page where we post when we go live, post a new YouTube video, or keep you guys in the loop with our real lives. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you when I see you. That's awesome.